big news, big news. The Queen is dead. I mean, not that it really changes much in the big, you know, in the actual structure of the monarchy, but I suppose at least people are talking about it, um, you know, the monarchy, um, in some ways. Maybe maybe some people will start questioning it a bit more. I think a lot of people forget that the the royals exist most of the time because they're just so freaking useless, you know? So maybe this will spark some discourse and some questioning of, you know, why why they even exist, you know, these days anyway. Even people who are, like, politically against monarchies, for some reason, the queen... I don't know. It just it must be because she's a an, a, a cute cute old well, quote unquote cute old lady in cute little dresses who, you know, for some reason people just kind of and I've seen a lot of takes online where people are saying like oh well she didn't do all of the colonizing she turned up afterwards and she was part of the decolonization efforts and that means that we shouldn't really be and it's just like what. I'm sorry. No, you can't. You can't. No, you can't stop people from criticizing the biggest symbol of the British monarchy um, uh, and the, the, you know, the whole freaking British colonial history. Like you can't you can't stop people from criticizing that just because she, you know, she's a little old lady who was born a bit later than the other people who did. And also it doesn't even hold up. Because when you look at when you look at the history, she was you know she was definitely alive for a lot of the the bullshit that happened. The cost of the funeral and crowning is making more people mad than the cost of the weddings did. At least, oh my god, Lance, I've been thinking about this all day, all day. I've just been thinking, how much is the funeral going to cost? How much is the funeral going to cost? Because when you think about it, right, it's a state funeral. It's a state funeral that they get. Which is ridiculous because they're so freaking rich. They should be paying for their own damn funerals, right? But no, it's a state funeral. And so I was doing a bit of research online about state funerals and I couldn't really find um, any real information about, you know, how state funerals are really funded, which I thought was a bit weird. Um, I did find some stuff about the state funeral in China, <clears throat> I think, but I don't know if it's the same, but I... I mean, a state funeral means that the government is funding it, right, with taxpayer money, I think, right? I mean, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a bit more research about this, right? Um, but, you know, I've been doing a bit of research and I just find it completely ludicrous that the state is going to fund the funeral of, of, of you know, the one of the richest people. It's just... Amazing. And also, I was... Hang on, Bob Ross is going a bit fast for me right now. Um, you know, I was I was looking up how much money they get from, from the government and the state and everything. And apparently they're... You know, the, the British monarchy's uh, spending on travel costs, renovation costs and all that, because they're renovating uh, Windsor Castle or, or something or Buckingham Palace or whatever, one of those ridiculous places that they own. They're renovating one of those places. And so they're getting, they're, you know, before the Queen died, they were already set to get a massive injection of, uh, you know, much more money in the years to come because of this renovation that they're doing, something like 30 million. And their spending over the past years has gone up 40%, 50% or something. And so it's just, it's really ridiculous. And as you say, Seek, with the current gas prices, um, I mean, I was just thinking, like, it's just going to be disgusting to see how much her funeral is going to cost. Um, while, you know, in a few months, there will be so many people in Britain freezing because they can't afford heating because of the, the gas, the, you know, the prices of energy and gas and all that. Now, I'm not in Britain myself right now. I'm in France. But my electricity bill has gone up from 44 euros a month to 59. And that is considering that the French government has actually put a cap on 
on how much it can rise. I don't think that's the case in Britain. So I think in Britain it's going to be much, much worse, you know, the rising uh, energy um, prices. Yeah, we pay for everything, I think. Yeah, a state-funded funeral. Now, I I am going to be doing a bit more research about this because I'm, I'm kind of unsure about how state-funded funerals work. But from what I understand, yeah, it, they are paid for by the taxpayer, which just seems just preposterously, it just seems disgusting to me, like personally. Uh, you know? In the UK, it's expected to be something like a 500% increase, which is fucking wild. Oh, my God. Well, I think it, the thing is, is like, I think a lot of people are in, the, in, in, in this situation of not minding the, um, the royals because most of the time you just forget they exist. So it's quite easy to not mind them because, like, what's their purpose? They're not, like... They're not like do it, you know what I mean? They, uh, from what I understand, they're not supposed to get involved in politics either. So it's not like they're out here saying, um, saying really inflammatory things all the time. Although, although you know, it doesn't stop. You know, it doesn't stop the. Uh, is it the Queen's son who's like literally a paedophile? Yeah. So the thing is, is like, okay, maybe, you know, in certain cases, you know, it could be argued that they're good for relations with other countries. But the thing is, I'm sure there are a lot of people who would be even more qualified than them uh, at being good for relations with other countries who don't require a hundred million pounds a year for living expenses. When you look at the amount of money that the state gives the royal family for living expenses, it is ridiculous like nobody needs that much for living expenses okay i'm sure that we can send people to other countries for you know maintaining good relations without giving them hundreds of millions a year so that they can eat gold golden encrusted donuts or whatever they have for breakfast you know what i mean scones sorry we're in britain so they'll probably be scones but um you know what i mean like i just i just feel like they don't need as much money as they get. That's 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 the whole point, okay? Look, I'm not here to say that we should send them to another planet, whatever, you know, they can stick around if they want. But what I'm saying is they should not be getting the amount of money that they do. It is just preposterous that so many people in Britain, so many kids are hungry, people can't afford energy, um, they can't afford heating, you know, it's just... It is just ridiculous. Like, in my opinion, they should be getting a lot less money. You know, they should be downsizing. Also, I think that they shouldn't be living in those big palaces or whatever they have. Those palaces should be, you know, tourist attractions or something, you know, open them to the public. Um, you know, you'd probably get a lot more money from tourism if you actually let the tourists go in and, and visit them a bit like they do in the Palace of Versailles in France, you know. I, I don't buy the, the, the argument that, that the monarchy is good for tourism, you know. I think that it would be better for tourism if, if you let the tourists in these, in these uh, historical buildings that these freaking people live in. Um. <laughs> Turn their palaces into social housing. I mean, I mean, that's also another idea. I, I would think, you know, I would think keep the palaces how they are, open them to tourists and all of the money that is gained from tourism to the palaces can be used to fund social housing, maybe. Because I'm not sure if the palaces are really set up in a way, like in a logical way to house families. But I, I like the sentiment. I really do like the sentiment. Make them into museums like France did, right. And all of the money from admission to entry can be funneled back into social programmes for the poor. It can be funneled back into the countries that Britain fucked over. I don't know. Turn the palaces into theme parks. Yeah, I mean, that's a good idea too. Their properties are literally worth billions, right? That's a very good point. They are worth billions, billions. And... And um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, that part of the reason they're getting millions more in, in, in state funding over the years to come is because of renovation work being done 
on the properties. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if it's Windsor or Buckingham Palace or both, but basically, um, you know, all of the plumbing and electric and um, there's a best, asbestos, asbestos, is that the right word? Yeah, there's loads of stuff wrong in, in these properties, you know, kind of because they're quite old properties. And so it's come to the point where they need to be renovated. And so that is why they are getting a massive, uh, massive amount of um, of funding, way more than they've had in the past years, in the in the coming up years, to, to renovate these places that are literally useless. I mean useless. They're not, well, I mean, they don't... <laughs> If it was like the Palace of Versailles or whatever, and they were actually open to, you know, they actually served a, some kind of, you know, purpose as a museum or a theme theme park. But no, 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 no. They're just literally, they're just big freaking places that rich people. It's just, oh, God. I wonder how much of the funding gets lost. Well, I wonder how much of the funding goes towards just ridiculous expenses like... I don't know, suits and ties that cost like £5,000, like £10,000 for a pair of shoes. I don't know, you know? Because living expenses for the royal family, let's be real here, living expenses, they don't look like living expenses for you and me, you know? It's just this completely different kind of living expenses we're talking about, Right? You know, as much as they say, oh, you know, we need a hundred million for whoever the hell for living expenses. I mean, what kind of living expenses are we talking about here? We're talking about private jets. We're talking about thousand um, dollar pounds suits and clothes. And um, we're talking about hundreds of thousands in garden parties and receptions and alcohol and food. Like, and all of this is state funded? How is this? Can't they be paying for all of this themselves? I'm sorry. Two million of their funds last year went to paying off one of Prince Andrew's victims. And that's state money. Like, surely this should be coming out of Prince Andrew's freaking bank account. Free the Scots, unite Ireland. Yes. <laughs> I'm not on Twitter at the moment, but apparently Irish Twitter, Scottish Twitter and black Twitter has been having a having a day, you know, with the with the memes and stuff. They've all been uh, going for it. I've been thinking about getting back on Twitter just for the, just to see what's going on. But, you know, then I thought it's probably best just to, just to um, stay on the sidelines for now. My return to Twitter will happen at some point. Have you seen the Ar Argentinian TV show that celebrated her death? Oh yeah, I I did see that. Yeah, I saw a clip from it with a guy who was like, yay. And then he was like, he was popping champagne and talking about genocide and like British genocide and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> what a legend. Like, I don't know. Look, I get, I get, I, I get it that a lot of people are like, oh, well, why, you know, you know, have some respect. Like she was just an old lady, whatever. It's just like, well, if she was just an old lady and, um, and she wanted to distance herself from all of the atrocities that had been committed by, by the, the monarchy and the royal family, then she could have just not been, she could have just stopped being the queen at any point. And she could have apologised. She could have said a lot of, you know, there's a lot of things she could have done that she didn't. She's not like the old ladies who will freeze to death this winter. Yeah, exactly, right? She's not like the old ladies who will freeze to death th this winter. She was one of them, you know, arguably the most privileged old lady who, on the planet, never known a day of, um, of, uh, of... <laughs> of not being able to pay rent or, you know, being cold because she couldn't turn the heating on because she didn't have enough. You know, these are people who are just completely, you know, who have no idea what the real realities of, of, of regular people are. The truth is, is she was just an incredibly rich, privileged old lady 
who benefited from hundreds of years of brutal colonialism. I mean, you know, you can argue that she was born after the worst of it, but if she really cared about, you know, about all of that, then perhaps she would have said something or she would have, you know, ab abdicated. Is that a word? Like, you know, I don't know. I just, I just think it's time to perhaps put the, uh, the monarchy to a vote. You know, if you put Brexit to a vote, why not the monarchy? I don't understand why it hasn't been put to a vote yet. You know, why not? How come? How come? How come the, uh, you know, the head of, what are they called? The head of the state? I don't, I don't know what their official title is. How come there's no vote? How come there's no vote? Hmm? Although, I mean, to be fair, um... You know, just because you get rid of the monarchs doesn't mean that you will get rid of the atrocities of colonialism. And uh, it doesn't mean that, that Britain would stop. I mean, France is a very good example, right? I mean, France France hasn't had a king or a queen or whatever in ages. And yet France, um, I think currently is, 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 um, is the European country that still engages in the most uh, colonial bullshit overseas if i'm not mistaken she never acknowledged the atrocities and the slavery she benefited from exactly exactly from what i understand um i i looked online apparently the 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 king or queen or whatever the royal family are expected to to not engage in politics and be neutral politically they're not expected they're expected not to vote um and it just seems so strange to me. Like, what? Okay, so these people are supposed to be the people that we send overseas to have good relations with other countries politically, but also they're supposed to be politically neutral and never say anything political? What? Huh? What, so they're just rich people in nice clothes? That we pay to, to have ridiculous, ridiculously lavish lives? As if they lose anything from not being able to vote, all their needs and wants are catered to. Yeah, I mean... And I think from what I understand, they can actually vote. Like they're not, they're not barred from voting, but I think it's suggested that they shouldn't vote or something from what I understand. Like they're allowed to vote, but it's suggested that they shouldn't. Not that that makes, you know, not that it makes any difference, but. <laughs> and their position is inherently political. Yeah, I mean, exactly right. It's just, it just seems very strange to me. It's all just very strange. Very, very, very strange.